So we are in the month of Tammuz. We should be dead, yeah. All of the stuff that we did. Wonder where how you forgive. Swimming in all of these sins. Have mercy on your kids. We ain't really know why we should leave. We was told the total opposite. The water all banana we can see. Thank you for waking us up at the end. The 24th of Tammuz, 5784. July 30th, 2024. This week's parashat is Matot Masse. And we will jump right in. We remember all throughout the book of Bemidbar, throughout the entire journey through the wilderness, Israel is being tried and tested, purged of impurities and blemishes on their consciousness, individually and collectively, blemishes on the soul that need to be rectified. Hashem is merciful. He knows that Israel has been enslaved, not only physically, but spiritually and psychologically, in the land of Mitraim, Egypt, full of idolatry, wantonness, magic, witchcraft, and wickedness. He knows that for those who have been so traumatized, defiled, and confined, a sort of Stockholm Syndrome sets in, and we begin to love the enticing deviances of our oppressors. To recap, we're just going to jump right in. As a refresher, we're going to momentarily revisit the zeal of Pinchas, who is the soul of Eliyahu, Elijah, who in the same way he was zealous for Hashem's name's sake, to turn the people's hearts back to the path of Torah and to the love of Hashem's righteousness and uprightness. He dared even mock the prophets of Baal and put their gods to the test for the glory of Hashem. Pinchas, being the manifestation and incarnation of the zeal of Elijah, acted zealously for the sake of Hashem and to stay the plague that was ravishing Israel because of sexual immorality and idolatry. And his deed saved Israel and stayed the plague. Let us review. Reading from Sanhedrin 82b, Rabbi Yohanan says, Six miracles were performed for Pinchas when he killed Zimri. One is that Zimri should have separated himself from Kospi, and he did not separate himself. Had he done so, it would have been prohibited for Pinchas to kill him. And one is that Zimri should have spoken and alerted the members of his tribe to come to his assistance, and he did not speak. And one is that Pinchas directed the spear precisely to the male genitals of Zimri and to the female genitals of Kosbi, so that the reason that he killed them would be evident. And one is that Zimri and Kosbi did not fall from the spear. And one is that an angel came and raised the lintel of that chamber so that Pinchas could emerge, holding them aloft on a spear. And one is that an angel came and caused destruction among the people, distracting them from interfering the actions of Pinchas. Pinchas came and slammed them on the ground before the omnipresent and said before him, Ribono shel olam, Adan olam, Melech haolam, master of the universe. Will 24,000 of the children of Israel fall due to these sinners? As it is stated, and those that died in the plague were 24,000. And that is the meaning of that which is written. And Pinchas stood and wrought judgment, and the plague was stayed. Rabbi Elazar says, It is not stated in the verse, and prayed. Wayit palel. Rather, it is stated, Wayefalel. This teaches that Pinchas, as it were, wrought judgment. Pelilut with his creator. The ministering angels sought to push him away because he spoke harshly to God. Chakadosh Baruch Hu, the Holy One, blessed be he, said to them, leave him be. He is a zealot, son of a zealot from the tribe of Levi, who was zealous in avenging the violation of his sister Dina. He is an alleviator of wrath, son of an alleviator of wrath, a descendant of Aharon, 
Aaron, who alleviated the wrath of God during the plague that followed the assembly of Korah. Now, moving over to Sanhedrin 44a, we get another nuance to take on the righteousness and merit of Pinchas' zeal. The Gemara asks, what is the reason that Yahushua, Joshua, is considered to have answered Elohim, God, with impudence? If we say that it is because it is written, and he laid them out for the Lord, and Rav Nachman says that this means that Joshua came and cast the spoils down before God as part of his argument, this is difficult. Is that to say that Pinchas did not act the same way in the incident involving Zimri and Cosby? As it is written, then stood up Pinchas and executed judgment, vaye falel, and the plague was stayed. And Rabbi Eleazar says, and he prayed, Wayit Palel is not stated. Rather, and he executed judgment. Waye Palel is stated, which teaches that he entered into a judgment together with his creator. How so? He came and cast Zimri and Cosby down before God and said to him, Ribono Shalolam, Adanolam, Melech HaOlam, Master of the Universe. Was it because of these sinners? that 24,000 members of the Jewish people fell. As it is written, and those that died by the plague were 24,000. And we see, of course, that it doesn't literally say Jewish people. Of course, it says, Ma Yitzrael, the Israelites. Am Israel, the people of Israel. Now we know from our oft repeated history. Now we know that a plague is almost always, if not always, sent as a judgment specifically for sexual sin, sexual immorality, which is almost always, if not always, preceded by pride and arrogance, which is its own form of self-idolatry, zeal for one's own lusts, and fleshly desires and worldly ambitions, coveting the carnal of the created rather than being zealous for the things of heaven and the creator. We see that because of the plague that eviscerated 24,000 of B'nai Yisrael who had defiled themselves by unclean foods and wanton women, Hashem decrees that Moshe should take vengeance for Yisrael. Yet, Moshe tells Yisrael to take vengeance for Hashem. As we see in Bamidbar Rabbah 22, the Lord said to Moshe, saying, Take the vengeance of the children of Israel against the Midianites, then you will be gathered to your people. Take the vengeance of the children of Israel against the Midianites. Then you will be gathered to your people. Rabbi Yehuda says, had Moshe sought to live several years, he could have lived. So this is interesting to note that the culmination and completion of the retribution in the form of vengeance upon the Midianites for the lives of the 24,000 of B'nai Yisrael was the final fulfillment of Moshe's mission in delivering Israel, And at the completion of this part of his mission, he is told that he can and will be gathered to his people. Thus, the implication here is that if Moshe had wanted to live longer, he could have, would have, he saw fit to accomplish this mission that would be his ultimate act to deliver B'nai Yisrael in this retribution. Had Moshe sought to live several years, he could have lived, Rabbi Yehuda, Yehuda says. As HaKadosh Baruch Hu, the Holy One, blessed be he, said to him, take vengeance, then you will be gathered. The verse made his death contingent upon Midian. This is rather to inform you of Moshe's praiseworthiness. 
He said, will the vengeance of Israel be delayed so that I will live? <laughs> Baruch Hashem. <laughs> he said, Moshe said, will the vengeance of Israel be delayed so that I will live? Immediately, Moshe spoke to the people saying, select from you, select from among you men for the army, men righteous, and elsewhere choose men for us. And likewise, when slumber falls upon men to wreak the Lord's vengeance against Midian. HaKadosh Baruch Hu, the Holy One, blessed be, he said, the vengeance of the children of Israel. But Moshe said, mm, mm, mm. and look, this d displays the humility of Moshe that merited him to be able to be the only prophet, to speak with Hashem, not just face to face, but mouth to mouth. This type of humility and zeal for Hashem makes him the prophet of prophets. We're going to have to rewind that. Chakadosh Baruch Hu, the Holy One blessed be, he said, Hashem said, Elohim said, the vengeance of the children of Israel but Moshe said, uh-uh, this is the Lord's vengeance. HaKadosh Baruch Hu, the Holy One, blessed be, he said to them, it is nothing other than your justice, as they caused me to harm you. Mm. It is nothing other than your justice, as they caused me to harm you. So Hashem is saying to Moshe, and indeed to all Israel, as Moshe is the embodiment of all Israel. Hashem is saying to Moshe and Israel that the vengeance, the retribution, the wrath poured out on the Midianites, your victory over the Midianites is nothing other than your justice. In other words, this is done for your sake as they, in their wickedness, plotting and scheming against you, my children, they caused me to harm you. Mm. And how is that so? How is that so? Because we know that who Hashem has blessed cannot be cursed. How can one curse who Hashem has not cursed? by causing us through beguilement to curse ourselves. The original strategy, even in Gan Hayden, Gan Eden. Ironically, according to the vows, as this portion relates explicitly to vows and oaths to which we are bound. Ironically, according to the vows, the oaths of the covenant, Ketubah, which is the marriage contract between Hashem and Israel, which of course is Torah, Israel breaking their vows by sinning and corrupting themselves by eating unclean food and profaning themselves, whoring themselves, with the harlots of the Gentiles. Israel breaking their vows enabled the curses Hashem himself vowed to visit upon them if the contract was breached. So at Mount Sinai, a ketubah, a ketubah, a marriage contract was forged between Hashem and Israel. That marriage contract was Torah. And this doesn't need to be said and shouldn't need to be said. However, to clarify, for some who may not know, to forge something, to forge a contract, we know that now in the modern era, one of the first thoughts that comes to one's mind is forgery and scamming. We're not talking about forging a contract in that sense. We're talking about that which is forged by fire. 
we're talking about the forging as of the craftsmanship of a blacksmith that forges blade from metal, forging of a chain that cannot be broken, the forging of a bond by oath that cannot be broken, the forging of a covenant, a contract, like a chain that binds us, Israel, to the creator forever. The Brit Olam. So by Israel not upholding their side of the bargain, by stepping out, committing adultery, idolatry with the other nations, whoring with the Gentiles, falling in sexual immorality and witchcraft, that breach of contract on their end, unfortunately, compelled Hashem for his own name's sake to uphold his end of the bargain that said, if you breach this contract, if you step out, if you go astray, then I must, for my own name's sake, even with all my mercy, I must enact upon you the curses and destruction that I promised you in this contract. So even though Hashem is ever merciful, he had to allow Israel to be devoured. He had to allow Israel to feel the weight of the consequences of their breach of covenant. He had to allow Israel to be defiled, to be cursed, to curse themselves, to be cursed having cursed themselves. He had to allow Israel to be afflicted, degraded and defiled and eviscerated by plague. So that is what Hashem meant when he said to Moshe and Israel, it is nothing other than your justice as they caused me to harm you. He seeks to avenge Israel for the harm done to them by the beguilement, trickery, the slickery, the strategy of the Midianites, who through Balaam, through Balaam's revelation, realized that they could not curse Israel, but Israel had to curse themselves by being disobedient. And thus, they were given legal right in the spirit realm to harm Israel and allow Hashem to enact the curses he promised that would devour Israel. Moshe said, Ribono shalom, Adan olam, Malech haolam, master of the universe. Were we uncircumcised idolaters or deniers of mitzvot, they would not hate us. They persecute us only due to the Torah and mitzvot that you gave to us. Therefore, it is your vengeance to wreak the Lord's vengeance against Midian. So Moshe comes back and says, no. They only hate us and persecute us. They only tricked us to sin and break our contract with you because they envied us Torah and mitzvot that you gave to us set apart, sanctifying us with Torah that was not given to the other nations. They persecuted us for the sake of Torah and we died for the sake of Torah. Therefore, it is your vengeance because they did not afflict us but to spit in your face, Hashem. Ooh, that's just how righteous and humble Moshe was. Hallelujah. I made a promise, can't nobody take it. I chose to put you above all the nations. Out of your graves, I chose to awaken. We made a covenant, don't you forsake it. Come get protected while they going crazy. Israel, my firstborn, my baby. Israel, my firstborn, my baby. I woke you up in your land of captivity. I do not change, I want you to remember me. Laws and commandments, I gave you the remedy. Go read the testimonies for your memory. I said them prophets, but you was not hearing me. I come to you if you really come near to me. I heard your cry, now it's time to take it to me. I don't know what got you from all of your enemies Who you know open the sea Them waters were bitter but I made it sweet In case you ain't know how to swim I'm, I'm your protector so I made you walk on your feet This a reminder you married to me I just want you to be all I called you to be They called you niggas but I made you priests I'm about to give you back everything I'm sending plagues for you I'm sending boys drying up rivers I leave